This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Constable Aaron Tompkins from our Smith Falls Police Department, our community service officer, back with us doing our monthly report on FYI. Thank you very much. Again, thanks for having me and uh, love doing the monthly updates. Uh, today is March 8th and it's International Women's Day too. So we want to make uh, note of that and uh, thank you for joining us on this special day. Yeah, again, uh, we did a, a social media post. So just like to say thank you to all of our hardworking um, women that we uh, we have in our amazing organization and all of our, our support staff uh, as well. So it's not just the, the frontline police officers, you have dispatchers, you have administration assistants, um, you have like everybody else in working for the town and uh, amazing community. So we're just happy to say we have some amazing women that we uh, have working alongside of us in this amazing community so big shout out to uh, all the women plus all, all of our support systems as well family friends uh, you name it that's right we're very fortunate very fortunate March is uh, fraud prevention month and there's always you know we, we talk about this almost every time we meet uh, Aaron about uh, the fraud that's going on and scams that are going on it, it, it's sad to say and uh, it, it's a very prevalent Thing in our community in our society and it's not just here in Smith Falls it's Canada wide it's international um, they're they're very crafty and um, generally by the time they're always trying to stay one or two steps ahead of law enforcement agencies um, media because we're trying to expose the most common and uh, frequent frauds and uh, it's not only prevention it's that awareness piece right uh, I can throw out a number at you and it, it's very staggering so just Canada alone, 2021, um, there was over $379 million lost in Canada or in Canada um, alone. So $379 million, and only 5% are estimated to report being victims to police. So you can imagine what that number looks like. I did the math and it was in the billions. So that's just Canada for one year. And I think they had a 14 to 20% spike from the previous year, from 2020 to 2021. So it just shows you how much more crafty people are at home more. They've had more time. They're spending a lot more time online. And the fraudsters know this. They take advantage of it. So we did a post not long ago. And um, in regards to, it was pretty much the day of or the day after the uh, license plate sticker rebates that are uh, coming out from, from the provincial government. Um, people were starting to receive texts saying, hey, you're eligible, click here to get your refund quicker. And so we tell people, go to those trusted, verified sites. So in this case here, the Ministry of Transportation of Ontario, and it says right on there, checks will be mailed, confirm that your address is up to date with us. And this was the anticipated timeline. So all those people, um, we did have uh, a lot of reports of it. I haven't had any confirmed scams or people being um, frauded that way. But uh, again, that was almost immediately after that announcement, they were on it. So just shows you how quick and how easy it is to uh, to do it. And and it's it's that, that those numbers are staggering. And and the people that that don't report. Uh, it, you can be a very intelligent person and we say, oh, they just go out after the vulnerable. No, they get you where you're vulnerable. They talk to you about your children. They can, you know, intimidate you about grandchildren and it doesn't matter. You're going to do anything and everything you can. And a lot of people don't report, if I'm correct, because they feel embarrassed after the fact. Yeah, they feel embarrassed and um, especially when we do presentations to seniors. So maybe there's been a few instances where this has happened or, um, Somebody might step in as a family member and say, hey, mom, hey, dad, or grandma, grandpa, uh, you know what, I think it's time that we take over that financial control. And that's a very, very huge thing. So that's always something that we we do bring up in our, our senior fraud presentations. And actually, I should mention, we're, uh, we're doing one today to uh, one of our senior clubs. Um, and I'm partnering up with Victim Services for that one because they're the uh, partner agency that I uh, refer people that are either victims or um, almost victims, we call them. Um, and just to, to give them that wraparound service to say, hey, here's how you protect yourself. If you were a victim, these are the things that you need to do and they'll help them guide them through that process. So, And part of your education too, Aaron, is you go around and talk to stores. Like people come in and they buy, you know, a, a huge amount of gift cards. Exactly. So that uh, we, we try to go around before 
Christmas. So we usually go in November or we'll do some social media posts uh, around that Christmas season. And what we're, we're training our employers, uh, our merchants, uh, staff managers, all the way down. So we typically try and train the managers and then let them train their staff. And uh, we did up an amazing sheet that we've left um, with a lot of them over the last few years that was done up by victim services and ourselves just saying, hey, here's what to look for. Is somebody on the phone? Are they nervous? Are they buying uh, multiple gift cards and multiple denominations or large sums? Nothing wrong with asking. Um, hey, Kathy, I see you, you're buying five $500 gift cards um, for Steam or iTunes or uh, Xbox. Um, are you doing some Christmas shopping or um, are these gifts for somebody? And then that's that's when people say, you know what? No, I've been told I have to buy these gift cards. Mm -hmm. And after that training, we did that probably two to three years ago. We've had so many calls from retailers saying, I think there's somebody being victimized here. And uh, we were able to successfully intercept a lot of these transactions where before, um, before that training and that, that partnership within our community, uh, we didn't have that uh, as often anyways. Yeah, and it's it's such a huge, huge problem too that you know the whole month of March is is a is an awareness and prevention month because of it too. Exactly. So again, we can do it every month, and we, we yes. typically do in some fashion. Um, but you're right; we take the whole month to say, "Hey, this is what's happening. These are the numbers, and five percent is very, very low number." And that's always part of that educational piece and that awareness piece, saying. If you are a victim, that's okay. This is how not to be a victim in the future. And we want you to report it because if you report it, um, Aaron, Kathy, um, somebody, it might save them from falling victim to that same uh, type of fraud. So um, spread the word and go to those trusted sources is, uh, is key. That's right. That's right. And uh, if somebody wants to confide in you too, listen to them for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Now, in February, Big Brothers Big Sisters had their bowl for kids' for sake, uh, bowl for kids' sake, and you put a team in. Yeah. So we hadn't had the team in uh, in a few years. So um, Angie Bopre from uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters says, "You know what? You guys need to." So we we <laughs> took her up on that offer, and uh, pleased to announce we raised over nine hundred dollars uh, with some amazing donations from uh, family, friends. Uh, our, our police association also made a nice donation to us as well. So we had a blast. Uh, Chief Mark McGilvery was out, uh, donned on some bowling shoes and uh, jumped right in there to support this worthy cause. And again, just another community agency that we partner up with and uh, they do amazing work. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And, and on Pink Shirt Day too, you, uh, you, everybody had, uh, uh, where it says police on your uniforms, it, you had one done in pink. Yeah, exactly. So that's the, uh, the anti-bullying campaigns. So uh, again, just a day to recognize um, that bullying still ex is, exists in our community and uh, within our schools. And also, we just want to make uh, aware that we're not in support of that, but we're in support of protecting and educating. And um, bullying in today's society is, is not okay. So again, uh, there's laws against it. We, we go into the schools and they learn from a very early age what bullying is what's safe, what's not, and uh, the consequences, so. That's right, I mean, we talk about anti-bullying with, with, with children and, and teens and everything too. It happens with ad adults as well too. A lot with adults uh, yes. as well. So that's why we uh, hopefully can get these uh, educational pieces in, in place uh, at an earlier age. But uh, no, it is unfortunate. And uh, some people just don't recognize that they're being bullied until it's too late. That's right. um, so again, that's where we try to come in with that prevention and awareness uh, so it doesn't happen. Right, right. So on the opposite end of bullying, you had a random act of kindness week in February, from February 14th to the 20th, and uh, you handed out Tim cards, Tim Horton cards. Yeah, so that was uh, another great initiative. So uh, we did that for the week. Um, so we, we had done up some social media posts. Uh, I think we had Constable Butson uh, and Constable Murphy. He was a little camera shy that day. They were down out uh, at the Jerry Lowe Sends Outdoor Ring. So uh, they handed out a whole bunch of water bottles. And uh, I think there was about 30 or 40 kids there. And he just said, here you go. And it was like a stampede of kids coming over. And uh, had some other great uh, great success stories. Um, Constable Gauthier, she um, 
because there was a lady stuck at the end of her laneway at the, the big pile of snow, so she helped shovel her out. So, uh, Constable Kyogen, uh, he, he was our multiple uh, uh, random acts of kindness officer. I would uh, put him in that category, but he uh, helped lift a uh, heavy, uh, I think it was a, a washing machine off of somebody who was trying to do it alone in their pickup truck. So he came, gave that individual a hand. Another nice family. He helped cross. Uh, it was like one of the busy intersections, and they were pulling a whole bunch of uh, groceries. So uh, again, just helped them get across and said, "Hey, here you go, and uh, here's uh, a ten dollar Timmy's card." So they all got a hot chocolate from Tim Hortons after that. So again, just highlighting just some of the amazing work that we do as a police service, and just shows you what kind of uh, employees we have and frontline police officers we have here. Yeah, I mean, those are stories and memories they're going to talk about for a long time. Yeah, the uh, the feedback was amazing, and uh, love hearing some of the, the thanks from uh, from the families and stuff like that. Just a, a small two minute interaction with a police officer made such a big change, or maybe somebody had a negative interaction before or a negative um, perspective of police as a, a whole, and this made that change, right? So again, just little things, and that's what the whole uh, purpose of it is. Um, are we going to hand out gift cards every day? No, but you know what? We'll take that little special amount of time and say, hey, this is what our, our officers are doing every day. And um, just saying, hey, we love our community. Excellent, excellent. Now we had some, or you had some years of service uh, 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 awards too, our Constable Dave Murphy, 20 years. Yeah, so uh, he's he's got, yeah, 20 plus years now, which is amazing. Uh, it's an amazing feat in, in policing today. And the next one for him is gonna be 30, uh, 30 years. So that's, uh, you get your double bars. So that's the uh, Canadian Police Exemplary Medal. And uh, truly is, uh, I was the photographer that day. So it, was, uh, it is truly uh, nice to see officers getting recognized, as well as we had a, a nine year uh, police services board member, Rob Dobson. Uh, he was presented a nice little uh, plaque. And uh, I don't even know if you want to call it a trophy, but uh, a recognition and award. And uh, nine years, it was hard to believe, and that's what we were all joking around and saying, how was that nine years? But he was with our, our police services board um, for over nine years, and a great addition to the team. We're sad to see him go, but uh, he's moved on to other things, and uh, we understand that. But uh, just want to say a huge shout out, shout out to him for his uh, his amazing service, and uh, Cosmo Murphy, that was just a, a great thing to be part of. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And time goes by so fast. You know, when you get these 10 years and 20 year awards and that sort of thing, it just goes by so fast. It really does. But uh, fortunate to have Constable Murphy here yes. for uh, 20 plus years now. So uh, see if we can get him to 30. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Now this is Social Worker Week. Yeah, another big week. So we have over uh, 20,000 social workers in the province of Ontario. So again, just a, a week to recognize um, like we do nurses week, we do doctors week, we do police week. So, you know what, let's, uh, let's, we get them ahead of all those ones and uh, really truly showcase uh, the amazing work our social workers do. And a lot of people don't really fully understand how much work and what different fields social workers can be in. So um, the one we rely on mostly is um, we have uh, social workers within our MSERT, so our mobile response crisis teams um within Lanark County so that's that joint partnership we have with uh, OPP Lanark County, Lanark County Mental Health and Smith Falls Police Services where we're teamed up with um, crisis workers so I have social worker um, so if there's an emergency crisis call I'm bringing that worker with me and we can do an immediate assessment and where the social worker big piece for us comes in with this model through MCERT is um, the follow-up so let's say if somebody had a, a bad day or critical incident, uh, my social worker is going to follow up with them and they're going to say, hey, these are what you need. There might be a, a small waiting time. There's, there's that delay. So I'm going to be your interim person. I'm going to be that contact and uh, make sure we don't lose contact. And what that does is um, a lot of the times that person won't go back into crisis mode um, where before they were in crisis they would get over that crisis and then we wouldn't deal with them until the next crisis. So what we're finding is with the addition of the social worker and the MSERT team is we're not having as many of those up and downs, those spikes. So um, it, it truly is a great, great partnership. And uh, without our social workers within that model, it wouldn't be successful as it is. So 
Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, so much to, to, I learned when I talked to you, Aaron. So I thank you for sharing all these stories. Is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up? Again, just a big shout out to all of our uh, social workers, especially uh, all of our women within our organization and our community, and uh, the ones that support us the most. So just a big shout out and uh, just shout out for our, our partnership and our monthly meetings. Uh, do I, I really do look forward to them. And uh, I get a lot of positive feedback from our, our community as well. So. Excellent, excellent. Well, I thank you very much for joining us here too at, on FYI. Constable Aaron Tompkins, our community service officer from our Smith Falls Police Department. Thank you very much. We'll be talking to you in a few weeks.